to my course, Game Development Basics. This is the bonus content for week two. If you got to the end of week two and you're looking for a little bit more learning, these last few things should help you round out your game and just add a little bit more playability to it while also learning a few extra features of Unreal Engine. Let's start by making the game a little bit more dynamic. We'll increase the spawn speed of the bugs over time. That way it gets more difficult the longer the player plays. And here I am back in the project, and in our game mode is where we're handling the spawning of the bugs. If you remember, we set this timer on a loop called spawn timer, and this timer is spawning a bug at these intervals of spawn timer. The spawn bug takes a random angle and spawns a bug at a set distance on a circle surrounding the player. And what we want to do is we want to decrease this spawn timer over time. That way, the longer the player plays, the faster the bugs will be spawning. Let's create a new function. And I'm going to call this decrease spawn timer. And we can handle this a few different ways. You could do it based upon the time that the player is playing. And for this, there's a get game time in seconds that we could use as a check for how long the player is playing and then create a function based upon that. And then we also have the bug squashed. And if you remember, this variable is keeping track of how many bugs the player has squashed. Or maybe you can dream up your own implementation of how we can decrease that spawn timer. I would like to give you a challenge right now to attempt to do this on your own. And you can do it using one of these two nodes or your own method. If you want to attempt to do this on your own, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you how to do it using the number of bugs squashed. So to start out, what I usually like to do is try to define what I want to do and then write the code to do it. This is the mindset that you as a game developer or programmer should be getting into. What is the problem we want to solve and then how do you solve it? So really quickly, let's define what we wanna do. I'm gonna create a comment node and here I can take some notes. So the first thing I want to do is check the number of bugs squashed. And then every five bugs that we squash, I want to decrease the spawn timer by 0.2 seconds. Now here's a good way to start this function. We know at the end we want to set the spawn timer to something. And we know that we want that to be based upon the bug squash. So we have the input and we have the output of our function. What we need to do now is fill in the middle. And one thing I know right off the bat is that we're probably going to need a starting value for our spawn timer, because as we're changing this, we want to be able to reference that original value. The first thing I want to do is create a duplicate of my spawn timer. And I'm going to call this starting timer. And let's get a reference to this. Now I want to divide bug squashed by five. And because this is an integer, it's only going to return a whole number. It won't give me the fraction. So if bug squash is six, this is going to return one. And we know we want to decrease by 0.2 seconds. We can use a subtract node here and we want to remove from whatever the starting timer was. And we can take this and send it to a float and then multiply it by 0.2. So just to review, we're gonna find the number of bugs squash. We're gonna divide it by five, which because it's an integer, will only return a whole number. Then we're gonna send that to a float and multiply that whole number by 0.2. So for every five bugs that we squash, we're gonna take that, multiply it by 0.2, and then subtract that from the starting timer and set that as our new spawn timer. And the last question is, where do we wanna call this function? Well, if you remember, Whenever we destroy one of the bugs, we're adding to score. And since this is already in the game mode, we can just add it to this function. So here, immediately after we're incrementing the number of bugs squash, we can also decrease the spawn timer. And this will check every time a bug is squashed, but we're only actually going to affect this number every time that the number of bugs squashed reaches a multiple of five. The last thing I'm gonna do is just to verify that this is working correctly. At the end of this function, I'm going to add a quick check to print the new spawn timer to make sure it's working correctly. And here when we reach five bugs, it should be 
when we hit 10, it goes to 2.6, and so on. So the longer the player plays this game, it's going to get more difficult to keep up with the number of bugs spawning. And I'm just going to delete this because we don't need that print string anymore. And we can also delete this comment. The next thing I want to show you is how to create a second enemy just to make it a little bit more interesting for the player. And we're going to create an enemy that's slightly larger but takes two or three shots from the cannonball before it can be destroyed. To do this, we're going to use something called inheritance, and we'll learn a lot more about inheritance in week five of the course. But for now, we can select any actor and right click, and then up at the top, you'll see create child blueprint class. And I'm just going to name this BP tank bug. Now here we are in our new tank bug class. And if you notice at the top, it says parent class BP bug. Now what this means is that this class is going to inherit all the functions and attributes of the parent class, but we can create additional functionality on the child that the parent doesn't have, or we can change those variables. If you notice on our event graph, each of our events has the event and then this node, which is the parent, which performs the actions of the parent. So we can put some functionality here, which would mean it performs all the actions of the parent and then performs the actions of the child. Or we can put functionality like this, which would mean it would perform the actions of the child and then perform the actions of the parent. As I said, we're going to cover inheritance a lot more in week five, but this is just a quick overview so that we can understand a good way to implement this functionality. And if you want to attempt to do this yourself first, I challenge you to do this now and pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how to do it. And as a quick hint, we've already implemented some health variables into our player tower, so we can use a similar implementation for our bug's health. Here's how I'm gonna go about implementing an enemy that has a higher health value. The first thing I did, similar to the tank, is I created two new variables, starting health and current health. And I've included those on my parent actor, and then on the parent actor, during the begin play, similar to how we did it in the tower, I'm going to take my starting health, and I'm going to set that as my current health. And then if you remember, we're using the actor begin overlap event to check if the overlapping actor is a cannonball, and then we were destroying the cannonball on the actor. And I've included another check here to decrement the current health, and then if the health is zero or below, we're going to destroy the actor and add to score. And on my parent bug, the starting health is still set to one, which means after one cannonball, the parent bugs are gonna be destroyed. But here on my tank bug, we can set the starting health to a higher value, and we can set it to two. And just so that the player has an understanding that these bugs are a little bit different, we're gonna set the scale a little bit higher. And I've created another material that's kind of a bluish color to show the player that this bug is different. The last thing I did was clean up my spawn bug function a little bit. I took the functionality where we're getting a random spawn location and I made that its own pure function called get random spawn location. And then on the spawn actor, you can use a select node and show the two different bugs that you wanna choose from and then a random int and range down here at the bottom and that's gonna return either zero or one, which means we have a 50% chance of spawning either one of these bugs. And one more thing you're gonna to have to do to make this work, because here we're adding these bugs to an array, but not all of the bugs are BP bug. Some of them are BP tank bug. We just need to cast to BP bug. And one thing about casting is when we cast to a class, this will also work for any children of that class if we're casting to the parent. So by casting to BP bug, this will also work for our tank bugs because they're a child of BP bug, which means we're gonna be able to store all of our bugs in this bugs array. Let's test this out. And we can see there that we have a blue bug and when we hit it once, it's still there. And when we hit it twice, it goes away. And our normal bugs are still destroyed by one cannonball. The next thing we're gonna cover is creating an auto fire mechanic for our cannon. So if the player continues to hold the left mouse button, 
it will just fire the cannon over and over again until the player releases the button. Here we are in the player tower function, and we have here our fire cannon. And what we're doing is spawning a cannonball. So the first thing I want to do is collapse this to a function. I'm going to call this start firing. And what we want is a timer. So I'll drag off here and I'm going to type set timer by function name. And our function is going to be start firing. And for the time, we'll do one second. And then I want to make this a variable called fire rate. And this is going to be a looping timer. So when we press our fire cannon, it's going to set a timer by function name, start firing with a rate of one second, which is our fire rate, and it's going to loop. And then when we release the left mouse button, we want to clear timer by function name. And the function we want to clear is start firing. Let's test this out. I'm holding left mouse button and we're continually firing cannonballs. And if I let go, it'll stop firing. The last thing I want to cover, which I think will really make this game interesting, is the creation of power-ups. Now there's a lot of power-ups we can make for this game to make it more interesting. The one I'm going to make is a power-up to refill some of the tower's health. I'm going to create a new blueprint, and it's going to be an actor blueprint, and it's going to be called BP Health Power-Up. And I'm going to start by creating a cube just so we could have a visual representation of the power up in the scene. And we want it so that when this cube is hit by a cannonball, it restores some of the tower's health. I challenge you at this time to try to do this yourself, and then I'll show you how to do it. So if you remember on our bug, we're using the event actor begin overlap to check if the overlapping actor is a cannonball. And then if it is, we perform some functionality. We can copy this and put it into our health power up. If it is, we're gonna get actor of class and go for our player tower. Again, we know that there's only gonna be ever one tower in our game. We're gonna then do a check. Is the tower health less than the maximum health? If it is, we'll increment the tower health and then we'll destroy the power up. Let's test this. First, I'll fire it when I have full health, and we'll notice nothing happens. Now if I hit it, it'll increment the health. So the last thing we need to do is spawn some of these into our game, because right now we just have one that I manually placed in the map. So let's start by deleting that. And how do we want to handle spawning these? I think a good way would be to spawn one every time the player destroys five bugs. And here in our add to score function, we can add a new function for this purpose. Here, I'm gonna take my bug squashed, and if I type the percentage key, I'll get this, which is called a modulo. Now, a modulo is like division, but instead of returning the product of the division, it'll return the remainder. So if we're doing bug squash modulo three, and the number of bugs squashed is three, this is going to return zero. If the bug squashed was four, this would return one, and if it was five, it would return two. So we can do a check to see if whatever this module returns equals zero. And if it is, we know that it is a divider of three. Then we can spawn a power up into the play field. So let's drag off here and type spawn actor. And we want this to be a health power up. And we already have a get random spawn location but this is spawning them maybe a little bit too far away from the player. So we can duplicate this. Instead of our bug spawn distance, we can put it at a lesser value. Let's do 1500. And let's change the name of this function to get power up spawn location. We'll drag that in there. And now every time we destroy three bugs, we'll spawn a power up into the field. And there's our power up. And that's it for the bonus content this week. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little bit more. In week three, we're gonna be doing a lot more of these challenges. 
So stay tuned for additional content. And again, thank you for watching.